another clutch win last night for the official Western Conference team of brother from another. That would be the Memphis Grizzlies, who own the second best clutch winning percentage behind the Suns in the NBA this season. And a certain network, which shall rename, name, remain nameless, I beg your pardon, certain network there you go. shall remain you. nameless, uh, decided that it was best for business that uh, not having the Grizzlies and the Spurs as their national game was better than what was not as good as having the Knicks in the heat. All right, and yet you best believe the the Grizzlies took notice of that, including our next guest, one of the leading candidates for most improved player. That would be Desmond Bain uh, of the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, you know, listen, man, I want a lot of thank you for being here. A lot of teams yeah. say, yeah, keep disrespecting us. Keep underestimating us. Keep overlooking us. We like it like that. Do y'all really? Because when somebody says like, "Yo, we don't want to watch y'all. We rather watch, we rather put another game on national television." Like, something that's got to get to you just a little bit, right? Ah, uh, no, nah, it's always you know we we take note of, of all these little things that, um, you know, whether it's the national media or television, um, whatever the case, other teams, rankings, whatever. You know, we we see it all. We we keep it under under our vest and you know keep on moving along best we can. So last night, you, you, go, go oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I just yeah. wanted to talk about yeah. last night. Last night was a great example of of, of staying ready, so you ain't got to get ready. I think you missed yeah. like a week in health and safety protocols. You come in yeah. last night and go for 20. What did you do during your time away to stay sharp? To where you know I think you had 11 in the first quarter against San Antonio last night. To where you didn't miss a beat when you came back. Yeah, I mean, everything. I mean, I have my trainer, um, you know, down here. He, you know, had been through COVID already previously. So um, we were able to get a little work in, in the gym. The Grizzlies had sent me some stuff uh, to keep me sharp, keep keep me uh, in the loop with things. So, um, you know, even though I wasn't with the team, I was still doing stuff to, to stay ready, like you said. You know, uh, Desmond, I don't know if, if your ears are ever burning if you're in the Northeast, but people in Boston <laughs> still are upset that they oh, drafted man. you. Oh, That's man, like, you're like, like, why hey, hey, why they move on from Desmond Bain? Like, oh, come on, it's, it's so <laughs> stupid. But you think about your, Mike mentioned off the top, your improvement, and you're a candidate for a most improved player. Like, you really have taken your, your scoring averages, gone up everything that you, you did last year well. You're doing better this year. What was your mindset coming into that second year? Like, what, what were some of the things that you said, all right, I'm going to do this? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, I sat down with our coaching staff um, after the season was over with. And, um, you know, they told me they wanted me to, to be able to make plays on the ball. You know, they wanted me to be able to make plays on the ball for myself and, and for others, um, you know, be able to really compliment John in the backcourt. Um, you know, so that was something that I really honed in on, um, you know, throughout my summer workouts and took it in the summer league and, you know, was able to implement it into the season. How about the team's improvement? I talk about your personal improvement, but your team, uh, you know, right, as, as Mike mentioned, right at the top of the Western Conference have been there and really ascending, had a, a, some, some really nice winning streaks this year. Where where did that come from? Where where did it, was it? In, in other words, was it the was it the play in when you started to feel it? Was it the first round where you gave Utah a little bit of a scare? Where do you think that that push toward the top of the conference? Where did it start? Yeah, I mean we're we're a young team, um, you know, so we're obviously continuing to grow, continue to develop, continuing to get better, and. Um, you know, I feel like we've really taken that that next step this year. I mean, last year the playoffs, the play in was obviously huge for us, huge for our confidence. Um, you know, we we use that and build off of it. Um, you know, I think Ja had an incredible off season. Um, Jaron back healthy. Um, you know, I had a good off season, and uh, you know, we're we're putting it together. But that thing, most improved player. You know, past tense. But I mean, in in, in some respects, right? I wonder. The way you've played this year, how are you continuing to improve as the game, as the season goes on? I beg your pardon. I, I assume that that process is never finished for somebody like you. Never. I mean, you know, I'm always constantly trying to improve, whether it's, um, you know, continuously working on my game, working on my body, 
um, doing stuff to keep my mental sharp. I mean, it's, it's more than just putting the ball in the hoop. You know, a lot goes into it. But, um, you know, I'm always trying to stay sharp, trying, trying to stay on top of my game. Um, you know, there's there's levels that I want to reach. There's there's things that I want to accomplish in this league. And, um, you know, I'm a young player continuing to get better. But, um, you know, I think we got something special for right here in Memphis. No doubt. We talked hey, earlier I about the, the people at ESPN, you know, being like, you know, hey, you know what? Let's get rid of uh, Memphis and San Antonio and go with uh, the old school 90s Knicks yeah. team rivalry, you know, bigger yeah. markets or whatever. But last night, I mean, I, I, you know, John Morant, you guys know you guys are much must see TV and John Moran is your headliner. He has some crazy shots last night, some crazy headlines, yeah. and that's just another night at the office for him. What's the yeah. wildest shot you've ever seen him make either in a game or in practice? What's the craziest thing you've ever seen him do? I mean, in open gym this past summer, there was a play like he was coming down the court. Uh, they said like a drag screen and he split it like low taps. And there was a help defender, two help defenders coming over and like he took off off his right leg and like had it in his right hand, switch it to his left and dunked wow. it on two dudes. Yeah, I mean, when I when I saw him do that, I was like, oh, yeah, like I, I always knew he was, you know, super athlete, but, you know, he he one of a kind for real. What what are, you know, Mike mentioned your your practices. Uh, I, I'm going to the extreme here. When I look at like the original Dream Team and I see some of their practices, oh, and I yeah. hear about their practices. <laughs> I say, "Wow! Legendary. I wish I could have just, you know, been a fly on that wall and just check that out." Yeah. How about your practices? Is it, is it always, uh, you know, I don't know if you call it, you know, blue team versus gray, first team, second team. Is it yeah. always first versus second, or and, and what's the competitive level like there? Like, to, give us a give us a little pre uh, a peek into what Grizzlies practices are because I'm sure. Everybody benefits from having to practice against you and and Ja and, and some of the other talent sure. on your team. For sure. Nah, I mean we're we're full of competitors, um, full of underdogs. I mean, pretty much everybody here um has some sort of a story. Um, you know, Ja obviously played a mid-major school. Um, you know, I was gonna sign to a division two school out of high school and um, you know, ended up getting a TCU offer late and played four years. Um, Dylan Brooks played three years. I mean, so we got some guys that kind of been through some stuff, been around the block. Um, so it breeds like a competitive environment, um, you know, but at the same time, it's all love. You know, we're, we're all, we're competing against each other because we're, we're on the same page, trying to do the same things and accomplish the same things. But, um, you know, we, uh, we special, man. We, we got a special group. Speaking of special, uh, Steven Adams, like just what's it like being that dude's teammate? He the anchor. I mean, he uh, he do a little bit. Of I just see him pick. I just see him picking people yeah, up. That's, that's, like that's, like that's if there's trouble, that's, like you know, you come in with me. That's what, that's what <laughs> ain't nobody about. challenging him. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, he bring like a different uh, element to our team. You know, his passing ability, his team first approach. Um, you know, physicality. Uh, you know, I credit our GM all the time, but uh, you know, that was another really good pickup that he had. You know what? And 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 speaking yeah. of uh, of credit, Taylor Jenkins, man, we talked. Michael asked you about the competitiveness, the environment of practice. Like, what is he? What what buttons is he pushing in particular as a coach to get the most out of this? You know, this this band of underdog brothers that you described. Yeah, I mean, he he breeds a, a player first culture. Um, you know, he puts his guys before everything, and he really leans on us for a lot of that. And gives us the floor. Um, you know, he instills, uh, you know, the values and the principles that he wants to instill. But he knows that, um, you know, you're only going to go as far as your players take you. So, you know, I think that trust that he gives us really bleeds out on the court. Um, you know, we got a great relationship with with him, of course, and. Um, you know, I think that he's definitely uh, the lead candidate for coach of the year. You know, Mike, Mike uh, described Memphis as must see TV. I couldn't agree more, but just being there. How would you describe playing in Memphis? And, love and it. Describe the community. What's the community? How, how do you describe the community? I mean, it's a blue collar, um, you know, everybody around here works for, for what they got. So, um, you know, they rally behind a, a team like us that, um, you know, comes out and puts our hard hat on, you know, every night. One thing you can count on from the Memphis Grizzlies is we're going to play hard. Um, 
you know, and, and our, our city feels the same way. You know, one thing that they're going to do is they're going to fight, they're going to claw, they're going to scratch. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm real happy that I ended up here in Memphis. Did you know yeah, anything though, about before you got sick. there? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, had you heard of, uh, had you heard of grit and grind before you became a, a, a Memphis Grizzly? Oh, yeah. I mean, Zach Randolph, he's from Indiana. So he, you know, grew up about an hour and a half from where I grew up, um, you know, so I was always a big z fan. And he was kind of the leader of that culture, um, you know, the grit and grind. So, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to carry that over. So, so you had already seen Hustle and Flow. You already knew about Ball and G. You already knew about Three Six. You was you was ready for you was ready. You, you, even though, because I I know there was a chip on your shoulder. You talk about that underdog yeah. thing. I mean, you were a first round pick, but thirtieth pick. Yeah. You know how how much? And a lot of people say I remember all the people. I could name all the people that were picked yeah. ahead of me. How much does that drive you day in and day out on this journey to being uh, this improved player that you are this year? I mean, it's it's everything. I mean, I don't. I'm not really a guy that has to look around for, um, you know, more motivation. But um, that's something that, um, you know, I'll never forget. You know, I'll never forget the feeling of sitting there on draft night and um, seeing these organizations that talk so highly of me and um, were telling me that I'd be a good fit and you know they like what I brought to the table on and off the floor and then, you know, see them choose somebody else, you know, and I'm a, yeah. I'll make them regret it. You know, I think a lot of teams already regret it, but you know, I'm going to continue making them regret it for hopefully the next 12, 13 years. I'm in the league. Well, listen, you know, I, I remember did, did, did seeing, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, the last thing real for me, uh, real quick, Desmond, I remember hearing Draymond Green name all the people who were drafted in front of him. I'm like, bruh, you named everybody who was drafted in front <laughs> yeah. of you. That inspired him. Like Paul Pierce used to do that. All the teams that pass on him, he'd go, he'd, he'd extend his shoot, his uh, shoot arounds or his practices an extra 15 minutes. If you just named somebody who was drafted in front of him. How about you? Is it, was there, as you were watching it on draft night, was there one part of the draft that really annoyed you where you thought, man, like I'm supposed to be there or, or, or like one, one incident where you just said, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it wasn't really, you know, since I fell to 30, there were multiple incidents, you know, I mean, this started at, <laughs> you know, we got the phone call from Detroit early, um, you know, and they said, hold tight, you know, we're, we're about to make, make, it, make it happen. And we saw that they had traded for the 19th pick. They called us right before they drafted the 16. So we thought we were going there and then, um, you know, Dallas had 18, Philly had 21, um, you know, so I, I remember all that and the team started trading around. Um, but yeah, I mean, so the, that's that's where it started. But, um, you know, I mean, I fell to 30. So a lot of teams had their chance. Yeah, but yeah, you'd, have, you'd have worked out wherever you went, man. But but like you said, it's a perfect fit. And uh, y'all play hard. Y'all might have a lot of hardware. We got the most improved player. Jago will be an all NBA, probably first teamer. An all star. Yep. I know I yeah. know your man Jaron Jackson y'all pushing him for defensive player of the year. Taylor Jenkins might be coach of the year and who yeah. knows man. Let's just do us a favor. We're gonna let you go. We know you you know you got to get back to work or whatever. So we appreciate you joining us, but do us a favor man. Make us look good because Michael and I have been pushing this bandwagon here. You know, like we, we, y'all like we, we, we ride with y'all in the, in the playoffs. Yeah. We, you know, we yeah, ride with I, y'all. Appreciate I appreciate it. We're gonna make some right, shake. Man. Cool. Thanks for following through, Desmond Bain. Appreciate it. Thanks, you, Desmond. Oh, and good luck it. in the three-point contest once they invite you. Better get, get this man a three-point contest. Oh man. All right, man. Be good. I uh, appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.